Well, what we're seeing from the McNeil Liberals is an austerity budget that's designed to punish the working class and make us pay for the Great Recession in 2008. Austerity is bankrupting uh, social services that people who are not rich need. The Liberals seem to have this backwards idea that um, they will stimulate our economy by cutting um, everything that Nova Scotians depend on. Every kind of person who needs support from the government is getting less now. Healthcare, even though it's seen as a quote core priority uh, in the department, what we're seeing is uh, a 0.8 percent increase which effectively is a freeze. They are opening the door for substantial privatization. 0.25, 0.3% of government expenditures go towards the environment. There's not a lot to cut there in the first place. Funding for renewable energy, for sustainable transportation, and energy efficiency have all been cut, but funding for petroleum resources has gone up. We're doing a serious disservice to some amazing progress that's happened in Nova Scotia. It's outrageous to make cutbacks and you don't consult those being affected, especially the marginalized, especially those who, like myself, are on low income. This budget, I find, is discriminatory against people with disabilities. The groups that they're threatening on cutting, people use to connect with other people. They only see me as a $600 a month check, right? And they're waiting for me not to be that, right? The people who are who suffer the most from this budget are all those who are already disadvantaged. I would really love to work in the film industry. So as a student and as a prospective film worker, I I feel like there's just there's no way that I can do that anymore. I am worried about my ability to sustain my practice in theater if there isn't also work available in film and TV. The presence of a thriving film industry really helps uh, a, a very diverse art scene in the city here. And if that goes, that can have a serious impact on the whole arts community in the city. And it's kind of heartbreaking that I might have to leave. I just got here. It's too bad. A uh, majority of the students that go to my school, NASCAD, are Oda Province students. I've spoken to several students that go to my school and they're planning on going to other art schools such as OCAD and Emily Carr. How are you going to keep people in this province if there's no opportunity? But the government handed out $22 million to the Royal Bank of Canada, which is one of the most profitable corporations in the country and a huge investor in the tar sands. I just know that that's a lot of money taken from people who need it going to people who don't. The government's just, you know, covering its ears and eyes and moving forward. If I was uh, Stephen McNeil sitting here, what would you, what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> what is this video rated? <laughs> God, uh, stop being a tool. <laughs> um. Mr. Stephen McNeil? Please don't divest from my future. What's the plan? Where are we going? Like, does he even live here? Does he even know how our economy works? Does he even want students in the province? There is an enormous disconnect between the people who have the power and the people whose lives are affected by the decisions that are made by those people. Listen to the people. It's not pensions of nurses or uh, university staff that are bankrupting our province. When are they going to see value in my life, in the life of my friends and family? You know, I count as a, as an, as a citizen of Nova Scotia. The slogan was Nova Scotians first. Well, it seems like we're Nova Scotians are last in what's come forward, and I'd like to know why. Austerity government does not work. Austerity budgets don't work. A government is in the business of providing a good life for all of its citizens. It's unfortunate that they're trying to pin Nova Scotians against each other. One of these cuts impacts all of us. It's not just about our individual struggles, but it's about an all-out struggle against the austerity agenda here in Nova Scotia and across the country. I'll put, I'll put it this way. I want a government that is actually the manifestation of the will of the people and not just the people with money. We absolutely can change the way that our government works, the way our economy works. We just have to be involved. And more than just voting, too. <laughs> it has to be more than that. Uh -huh.